Hello, I'm covering slabs in this video. Slabs are typically used for floor slabs. That's what they mean by slabs. And they can apply to other floors, not just a, a literal slab in the sense of concrete. You can find the slab tool on the tool palette on the design tab right there. And also on the ribbon under the roof pull down. So you have roof slab, roof and slab tools there organized together. I will cover roofs in a different video. The command is very easy to use. So I'm going to start my slab tool. Before I click anywhere, I'm going to go back to the properties palette, uh, which always will open as you start the command, just like most of your other AEC objects. And you can see that it has set to the standard style, which is pretty normal. Uh, your thickness is the main thing that you're going to want to think about here. So four inches might be normal if you're doing a slab on grade, let's say. But if you're using the slab for um, representing a second floor of a building, you could use it to represent uh, structural thickness, such as joists plus subfloor and finished floor kind of combined together, in which case obviously you would make it thicker than four. So consider how you want to use the slab in your project. And then your justification is normally top because you want the top of the slab to relate to the elevation of the other objects. So for example, your walls are typically drawn to where the bottom of the wall is at your zero height in the Z direction. And then you would have your top of the slab aligning with that. And then if you want to extend your walls down in order to do foundations and things like that, you could do so. So the slab is really only going to be necessary if you're worried about three-dimensional accuracy in your model. If you're just using AutoCAD architecture for plans, then there's not really any reason to create a slab. But if you are uh, looking to create a 3D model, or if you're using AutoCAD architecture for BIM, then making a slab is going to be part of your process. So after you've set those properties, then now I can start clicking points around in a loop manner around where I want that slab to go. I'm going to go around the interior face of my exterior block walls. And then I do want to trace around uh, where the uh, shape of the building changes. And then once I'm back to where I started here, I can hit enter, right click, hit space, and you're finished. Now the command does stay active so I'm going to hit right click again or space or enter. So that's really the basics of making your slab. In that sense it's very easy. The slab will look purple uh, and that's because of how the layer keys are normally set up. So it's going on the A slab layer um, and then again you can always change your layer keys if you wanted to customize that. One thing that's very important about the slab and uh, something that makes it easy to work with is editing the shape after the fact. So when you select your slab, your uh, ribbon will change to that context sensitive tab to where it's showing options for what you have selected. So you can add a hole by using the hole option. You can adjust the vertex points, make more vertex points, uh, anything of that nature that you really need. So for me to make a hole, I'm going to do a closed polyline. Uh, around the size and shape of where I want that hole to be. So now when I select the slab, I can go to hole and choose add, and then select that polyline. And then when I'm done selecting polylines, hit space or enter to move on. And then it asks if you want to erase the layout geometry, in other words, the original polyline. So if I'm done with that, I don't really need it anymore, so I'm gonna say yes. And now it's taken that out as part of the process. So it's pretty easy to make a hole in your slab and again, the most common reason to do that would be for a staircase going down to a level below. If you want to adjust the slab's extents afterwards, it's very easy. You can manipulate the grips. You have little round blue grips at the corners. If you hover, it says vertex. So that adjusts to where that corner point is located. You also have these uh, grips at the edge. You'll see that there's an arrow and then there's a very thin little line grip. If you hover, you can see that it says edge overhang for the arrow to where you can actually overhang it out past the original grip points. And then the little thin line grip is your actual edge. So if you wanted to pull the whole edge out, you could do that.
So that'd be faster than moving two separate corner vertex points. You could just pull the edge out by itself. Now, when you hover over that, you can see it also gives you additional options. You can move the edge and change the slope at the same time, add new edges, add new edges and change the slope, convert to an arc or offset all edges. So you can see, as it says there, press control to cycle between. So if I press the control key, it's going to cycle between these options. So I grab the grip first, and then it kind of tells you what you're doing. Stretch adjacent edges, no change to slope. So now if I tap control, it is changing the slope. And now it's adding edges, no change to the slope, uh, adding edges and changing the slope. So you grab the grip first and then tap control. So if I wanted to offset all edges, then I could do that. And you can see how it's adjusting all sides out. So by having the control to cycle between your choices, gives you a lot more flexibility in what you can do with those vertex points. If I want to add more vertex points, you can go to your vertex um, flyout in the ribbon and click add. And this is very uh, important if you want to have more control over the shape. So let's say, for example, this space under the stair where the closet is, instead of being a closet, that's going to become stairs to go down to a lower level. So let me erase the uh, tag there. So in order for me to make that shape, I need to add more vertex points to go around where that's going to be cut out. So I'm going to select my slab and then go to vertex and add. And then I need to add one point here. If I don't get the exact points right now, I'm not really worried about it because I can always move them. And then I'll add again one here. And then I need two more because I'm going to have to move one down there and one down here. So I'm just going to place those kind of quickly and then I'll manipulate their location afterwards right there and there. So now I can just move those points to where they need to go. So I can pull this grip down to here. Uh, I want to make sure that one's in the right spot. Pull this grip down to here and make sure that one's in the right spot. And so now you can see how my slab goes around that uh, open space of where that stair would go down to a lower level. So just one example of how you can uh, manipulate the outer extents of your slab, um, the slab's edges. Now, if I want to remove the hole that I added later or earlier, if I want to remove the hole that I added earlier because I was just goofing around then, I can go to hole and remove and select that hole and then it has taken that back out again. So that's the basic of, of doing a real simple slab um, you can see there's other modification options up there. And those are all pretty self-explanatory, especially if you hover your mouse over the name of the tool and you can see by looking at the little picture what they do. So that allows you to extend a slab out, trim a slab off. Um, pretty easy to figure out if you try those, especially reading your command line. Now remember with any of these objects, you want to edit the style if you want to get in and look at how that object is really made up. So if I go to edit style, and look at the style properties. Um, you have components and that's setting up the thickness of the slab and any components if it's a layered construction. So for example, if you wanted to have uh, multiple layers that create one overall slab object, you could do that in the same way as you do with walls. You have materials that are driving uh, the graphics of the slab like in section view or in uh, surface hatch and things like that. And then you have display properties which have the ability to uh, either take over the display properties instead of the materials or to get finer customization. What I'm going to do later is a, a specific video on editing display properties uh, and then that will clarify how to do some of this because it works the same for different types of objects like walls and roofs and things like that as well.